Good morning, everybody. I am letting somebody else in the waiting room. Today, we're going to be talking about the three applications, uh, new releases for the month of January and February. I'm going to take you to where you registered the SSDT meetings and trainings. This is where you registered. And then later today after this meeting, it'll be the recording link will be put here as normal. But where I want to show you and where what we're going to be talking about is down below from where you registered the release caps for calendar year 2022. They're categorized by month. We're going to be going over January and February. And then when you open up the January link, as well as the February, you'll see the three applications. We have them categorized as bug fixes, improvements, and new features. But you can find them all on one page. And you can also click to go to the, the piece at the bottom, like inventory. So again, I'm going to be going over the USAS releases for January, and then those few that are in February. So one of the things that we improved in January for USAS, let me go to the instance, is to choose which activity ledgers that you could repost. Like if you were advised by one of us from the SSDT team or um, if needed to be. So let me show you. You would go under system configuration um, activity ledger configuration. And prior, there was only one button that you could um, uncheck or check. Now there's four. So you can repost the ledgers that you choose to if advised. And if they're checkmarked, that means that they've been posted. And to, un to repost them, you simply want to uncheck. So if you want to uh, uh, repost the PO ledgers, you would uncheck that, save it, and then restart the application. Now this process is gonna take a while, so you'll want to watch it under system monitor, under the status tab. And this job, the encumbrance ledger, you'll see that it starts and you'll want to wait until that says completed. And then once completed, if you happen to go back to this screen, the activity ledger configuration, it will be rechecked if it posts reposted correctly. So that was the improvement in January. And so another improvement in February for USAS was the audit report. And the audit report was improved um, the way it was displaying the custom fields. And I have an example. Prior to the update or the improvement, the custom fields were just on the audit report, just said fields. So it changed from an empty field to the date. After the release and the improvement, now that custom field will actually show on the audit report and be more meaningful to you and the users. <clears throat> also in regards to that audit report, even though we're talking about improvements, there was an audit report bug in related, related to that custom field. And that was corrected on the release 8.41. What happened was the custom field threw a severe null pointer exception error, and that's been corrected as well. Another improvement was in regards to reports. And, and actually it was the way the system um, retrieved the budgeting transaction. So by improving that retrieval of a budget transaction, it improved the um, the time it took to generate the reports, such as like the certificate certification reports or the appropriation summary or the budget summary. So that was an improvement. 
And then behind the scenes, um, we updated the valid subject codes from ODE. Um, these are the valid subject codes that are to be used for um, fiscal year 2022. And another improvement was under, oh, I'm on that page, was this security tab. So where I got this was a system monitor. So we're looking at the monitor page. Prior to this button being added, the authentication events were listed under um, the event tab, and they would be one of the options in this dropdown. We have moved them over to here to the security tab. So now you can see they're listed. You can run a report. You can filter as needed because it's in the format of a grid. Um, so those were just moved from the event tab to the security tab. Also on this page, the server log button um, now includes buttons to download those security logs. So for example, this download security USAS web docker, this is the current log for the day regarding the, um, the security. So that can be clicked on, downloaded, and used as needed. Um, there, as far as bug fixes, there was a receipt code that has been corrected. It was called Disadvantaged Pupil Impact Aid. This was receipt code 3211. So as this comes up, you can see it used to be called Disadvantaged Pupil Impact Aid. And so now it's called Poverty-Based Assistance with that former name in the parentheses. And then finally, for those that are using the requisition approval workflow, there was um, this group chain report that when you clicked on it, it wasn't running at all. It wasn't generating. So that has been fixed. And I have an example of that. So this is the USAS group chain report for rec requisition workflows. And what it will show you is the group chain and the groups that are below it, as well as the participants that are included in the group. So that can be helpful, especially now that it's running. And finally, the only other um, thing that happened in USAS was also kind of internal. It was research done for the tools needed to help create that document management and archival function that is on the roadmap down the road. So that is all I have. Oh. And again, I wanted to also point out that these links here will take you to the release notes for more detail. Any questions? Okay, next will be Lori on the USPS releases and updates for January and February. Hope you guys all have a great day. Pat. Yeah. Okay. So share my screen. Come over. Okay. Can you see my screen, Pat? Hopefully you can see yep. my January recap. Did it share? Yep, we can see it, Andrea. Okay, great, thank you. I just wanted to make sure. Okay, um, again, welcome. Um, I will, this is Andrea, and I'll be going over the, um, oh, let me, uh, I get my video on, there we go. 
Um, I will be going over the payroll part of it for January and February releases. Um, again, Pat um, went through where you would find that, and that would be under us SSD team meetings and trainings. And then down below here is a re recap, recaps, just in case somebody came in a little late after Pat mentioned that. So what we'd be going through first would be our January, and we had quite a few. So um, we have a lot more than what um, UCS had. Um, so what we'll be going through first, and what I kind of did is I'm going to be following this um, through the bug fixes first for January and improvements and then new features, and then I'll be going over to the um, February's. So if you want to follow along a little bit. So the first one um, was a bug fix. And what that was missing was um, GM users didn't have access to the USP audit report. So what they did with that fix is they added to the group manager role and now they have a module, a module view privilege. So now that has been added. So when they go under system in the roles, now they're gonna see, and now when they run, um, they can run the auto report. So that has been added, um, so they can do that now. Um, the next one was the new contract calculate button. Um, what we were finding out was when they were in new contract and they were changing fields and just clicking on save, it was converting it back to the calculate amount. So maybe um, if you're wanting to go in there and just save certain fields without calculating. So now like I can go in and just change this 65 to 65 and just save. And now that is saving. Before it was not, it was just putting, taking, reverting, um, resorting back right to what it was. But again, if they wanted to calculate it, um, they still have that option and it puts it right back in. So either they can have the system calculate or they can actually save what they want to enter in if they want to make changes to that new contract. So that was updated in January with that book fix. Uh, the afford report, the position query. Um, what that was, there was an issue with um, if an employee was paid on a position during payroll and they posted the payroll, well, then they had to change that position number to another number. Um, maybe moving up, um, maybe they changed and moved the one to four or something like that. Um, and then they paid that position again on the next payroll. When they were running their forward program, they were finding out that that position history wasn't looking at all the positions that they were paid on, just that current position number. So um, that was a bug fix that they fixed in January also. Um, the next one was the payroll item mass loader. Um, this one, um, if under mass flow, we added under payroll items. So um, what they found that um, the missing deductions for maxed amounts. So down here, the maxed amounts, these were missing. So they added those um, and created those now. So now if they need to um, put those in the mass load for a change or add, um, those are now here. So now we will be able to find, <clears throat> yes, need to do that. If you go under there, they'll be able to find those under the mass load. And the other one was that they added was the, um, for the ACH fields, um, the crate during that a bug fix, they also added um, these fields for the ACH configuration. And you also can find those under, um, right here at the top. And those are for your dependent care and HSA. So in that bug fix, they also um, added, updated those real quick too. So, and again, those are in the documentation. Um, the next thing is the quarter report. Um, there was a bug where they split the Medicare and the totals at the bottom and they went ahead and fixed that. So now you won't see like um, a one next to a Medicare. They'll all be under 692 for one in the 692 employer. So you ain't gonna see them. And that was a bug fix on the quarter report at the bottom. On the payables detail report, um, the voided payroll payment showed a positive, positive applicable gross. So if a user voided a payroll payment, 
uh, the payables that were included in outstanding payables as a negative. So now when, um, when, they, when they added the payables to the DT report, the applicable gross um, should be displayed as zero now. So that was, um, was corrected on that bug. Um, the next one was on the payables DT report and that was um, archived report was not combining the rows for the monthly total. So it looked fine when you were running the report when in live, but when you were, um, when it was going over the file archive, it wasn't combining them like it would on the payables detail report when you ran it. So now when it goes to archive report, now you're gonna show them as combined. So those two figures would not show separate anymore. Um, on the absent attendance support, um, if the retirement hours are included in the import file, they should be. So now they updated that on this bug fix. And I also included the uh, link here for the specs for the absent import. And a, we added this to the documentation so that way um, if they have any questions of how what that import is looking at, um, that is now included in there. For the next one, the new contract. On the contract workdays should be calculated when the new contract is copied over. So in the new contract, when using the copy button in the new um, contract maintenance, um, it will require a contract and stop date, start and stop date now. Um, also, if it was, um, it's using the new contract stop date, it will automatically be set for one year prior from that contract. And then if using the mid-year contract stop date, it will automatically be set to the same date as the current contract. <clears throat> And then um, the contract Andrea, workday should calculate appropriately. Excuse me, we're still seeing the um, import, the mass load screen. We didn't know whether you were showing us something else or not. Oh, you're not seeing my screen anymore? We're seeing the mass load and that's it. Okay. Is now that we're better? seeing the... Oh, January sorry, I was 22. on the wrong okay. one. I was thinking you were on my, okay, on my right. So you're seeing this one. Okay, sorry about that. Mm -hmm. I thought you were on my other okay. screen. Okay, well, that makes more sense now. Okay. Um, all right, so where are we? thank you for letting me know. <laughs> um, the next one, um, let's see. The new contract, okay, uh, the new contract work days. Um, so that bug fix, now when they run the new contract for the contract work days, it will calculate the new contract as, um, as listed below. And some warnings have been entered, um, added. So they have to make sure, like if they have a start date, cannot be after the stop date, um, must specify a start date or a stop date. So those have been added and under new contract for the warnings. Um, the next one was the payables detail. Um, if a blank employer amount is in the payables adjustments under outstanding payables, um, these could not um, could show as spaces on the payables report. So this bug fix was now they will show as zero if they don't have anything in. If they were just any employee, um, now the employer amount will show as 0, 0.00 and not just a blank. So that was a quick bug fix. Um, on the employee onboarding, um, the dust and cape, dust date custom fields fail um, to convert the proper date formats. So now when they go to, over here, and they're in the employee onboarding, um, say they needed to, like the dates, um, they can enter those um, with custom fields now, um, just like normal. So if they want to add it as, where was I here? Use a shortcut, sorry about that. Um, short, they can use a shortcut. So they can use month and enters in 
a month. So it's just using the date shortcuts as what normal as the other ones. And again, we um, under the um, mass load, there we are, lost my mass load. And under the employee um, onboarding, I added that here. So now they can use date shortcuts. So if they're used to using these where they just type in the beginning of a, like a quarter or a period, they can do that also. So that was added too. Um, also, they can add it in any format and it automatically absorbs it to the start, you know, with the dashes in it. So that was a bug fix on that part of it for the employee dashboard. On the next thing, was the, see the auto report. There was an error um, when running their auto report. So that has been fixed. Um, that was in internally. Um, the next bug fix was a payroll item mass load. Um, it allowed the settings of the ACH destination using the router number property. So um, like say, if a user provides the ACH destination um, routing number in the payroll item load field, um, the ACH destination was not currently being set um, using that provided route number in the spreadsheet. So now that has been updated and it will look <clears throat> and set it as what they had in the payroll item mass load. And the next one was an update to the SOAP bridge. Um, it was just ignoring archive compensations. And this was a kiosk issue for some districts, um, ITCs that were having problems with some employees. And what it was, was when finding the first half of the compensation, <clears throat> it should exclude, we should exclude the um, excluded archive compensation as they are not um, active regardless um, in that date range. So in kiosks, it was trying to look at these archive and it was um, creating an error. So then they fixed that. Um, the next one, um, there was a corrected database, the connection link and the outstanding payables. Um, again, that was um, internally. Um, the EMI entry, um, add, mass, add missing non-certified um, employee ID property. <clears throat> For some reason on the EMI entry on screen under core, it was missing the non-certificate employee. Somehow that got removed, um, and we updated that and put that back in the EMI entry. So now that field is back. Um, on the service per pay report, um, you want to ensure any negative um, member numbers, de uh, deposits, or employee pickups um, should be converting to the adjustment codes of 51, 52, 53, or 54. And before, they were not. So that has been updated in January. So now negative service earnings, deposits, or pickups will be coded with a five. <clears throat> um, the next bug fix in January was the SSD Info Ohio Extract. And that updated the pre predefined report. Um, and now it uses the primary email address on their report. And that's the report under... Um, um, what was it? SSE Ohio Info. So, okay. Um, okay, so the next improvement would be um, the next, I would be going to the January improvements, and we had quite a few of those. So the first improvement in January would have been the improve the performance of the email notices. So they tried to improve that to make it a little quicker. Um, they also improved the performance of the schedule, the email direct deposit job. And they said they can increase that by 56%. So that's quite an increase. So that's nice. The next improvement, um, they added under the um, adjust. They added the adjustment journal under the audit report, which would be under your reports in audit. So they have quite a few now that are under here that can be ran, and and that's um, makes it a little quicker and nicer for the districts. 
The next thing that they uh, added, um, accumulation transaction um, delete record um, was showing no target key on the auto report. So this was just an improvement. So now when they um, delete something on a record, now it shows as delete and it shows where the target, who the employee was, position and activity date. So before, they, I, um, I guess it was not showing a lot of the information. It was hard to um, tell what, what was going on um, on the auto report for that. Um, the next improvement was the convert employee email direct deposit fields to the entity properties. Um, again, they all they did on this one was just to change the employee screen, the employee address to be primary email, secretary, and other email on the employee screen. Um, with this fix up improvement was also changed. So on the work um, flows employee grid. So now that shows exactly the same. And then also the employee grid under more, um, the user can show the email address on the employee grid by selecting them from the um, underneath the more and, and they're located under the contact section. So again, if they wanna add their email addresses to the employee grid, now that is at, um, available under the more on, in the employee grid. And we also updated the mass load um, to show these fields under employee. The next one was the update employee onboarding edit components to use calendar field for the date shortcuts. Um, again, um, that was kind of up here with that bug fix um, goes kind of goes hand in hand. Um, so now they can use those um, date shortcuts. Um, and this was that improvement um, for that. Um, there was a change that needed to be done for the order of the state reports um, for the um, order of the state ex extract options. So under reports in order of the state, we, now it's located under one link. And now it's under here, under the state. And now they can run it as the CSV or tab separated values for each one. So that is an improvement. Okay, I hear my chat going, let me see. Okay. Um, and then the next one was on the audit report um, improvement. Um, they did some performance improvements on the audit report, so it will run quicker, probably mainly for bigger districts or if they have more items selected in the auto report to run. Um, the next thing was they improved was this um, options page. Now, when they show the options page for the auto report, it shows everything, all the options that they selected during the auto report. So they can go back and look on that auto report if they need to and find out what they selected as their um, criteria. Um, the next one was, um, they were having a problem with the custom fields um, not reporting on the audit report. So now when they create cut new custom fields, so when they run their audit report, it's gonna show exactly how they created it. So that is an improvement on that. <clears throat> um, I wanna allow the users to enter um, employee number, lowercase and employee onboarding. There was an issue where um, um, they were trying to use all uppercase, I believe. And, and it didn't like it. So what they did just now when they're trying to employ, uh, add an employee number on in the employee onboarding, they can use uppercase or lowercase. And what it would do once it's saved, it will revert all to uppercase. So they won't have any more issues with that. Um, the next one was the current um, payroll. Um, and a lot of districts noticed this. Um, they had to remove some employee play, employee pay items under the grid because it was um, hindering their performance issues on that. So again, that was like a recent software update. And what it did removed a subset of properties from the payroll, payroll currents and current grid. So maybe when they were adding more um, options under the more, and this was causing some issues. So once the district went back in after this update, um, sometimes they were showing blank screens. Well, this was because of that update because they had some of these um, 
columns listed under their current grid and those were no longer available. So what's all you had to do? So if you, it probably shouldn't be a problem anymore because that was back in January. So everybody probably should have ran their payrolls already. And um, all you had to do is just refresh the screen. And then that just updated their, their screen and it um, took away um, the issue. So um, the next improvement was add validations to the ZIP and credential ID properties. Um, what we are finding out that on um, the ZIDs, excuse me, CI, CIP, ZIDs and the credential IDs should uh, be nine characters for EMS reporting, should be no more than that. So what they did was add a validation for the under, um, so they cannot enter a value in these fields that is not nine characters. So it cannot be under nine characters. So that was an improvement made on that one. Uh, the next in January for new features, was the added job calendar to the auto report. So that's another one they added under um, reports and auto reports. So now they can run it by job calendar. Um, and they actual, um, actually under the new SCP field names report extract. So now they can run it as um, an extract. I can't remember exactly what that one was for. And that one was for, okay, so any reports that you create, um, now they can be ran um, in a CFB. So that was that update. Um, the auto report, um, there were some more new features added in January. So the pay distributions, um, payroll accounts is added now, so they can run that in the payee. So now they have these options to run them under audit report, under reports. And now they actually added um, in that new feature was now they can run the audit report per employee. And this was um, something that they were asking for a lot. So now they can select um, what they want to run the um, adjustment journal for and pick their employee and add it and run it. And it only will select that employee instead of having to select everybody for adjustment drills for that period of time. Okay, so on to the next is the, um, will be the February releases. Okay, that over here. And on that recap, um, I will be going down um, under February and I'll be going through the bug fixes first and the improvements and the patches. So the first bug fix, um, which was a um, hot fix, was a, it was a correcting an error in the query when attempting to filter the outstanding payable bytes by electronic payment flag. So when they were under outstanding payables, they were getting um, an error. It would not filter um, the electronic um, payment and error would occur. So that has been fixed. So that is no longer an issue. For the mass load, um, some custom fields were now allowing um, clearing of the value if they entered it in to a CSV load. So now if fields are left blank in the CSV, the file will load with no errors. For some reason, um, there was a bug and it did not like if you left it blank. But now that has been corrected. Um, there was a soap bridge fix. Um, payroll item converter should handle all null retirement flags. So that was just in the soap bridge fix. The next one was the payment printing fails when an LPA or LP are not both present. Um, we had a bug on this, and if the district has their combined accrued and regular wages set on the payment printing configuration, and then and if this employee is paid using LPA payout and a regular payout, it was failing. It did not like that. It was expecting to see the LPA and LPE. So this was a bug fix that was fixed. On the next one for the file archive file info grid, um, 
they were noticing some districts are going in and trying to look at their file archive and it was resulting in error. They couldn't even look at it. And what we found out was they were going in and probably removing some columns from the more because they um, didn't want them to probably show on there and that was causing errors. So that has been fixed. Um, the new thing here, prevent users from the, um, deleting predefined custom field definitions. Um, this has been added now. So now they cannot delete any custom fields. They can only on um, activate them. So if we click on edit and it's active right now, they can go in and when they delete it, it's not really deleted, it's just on active. So it took it away. So that has been changed. So no longer can delete them. You can only unactivate them by doing the delete. So that was an update there. Um, let's see. On the auto report, um, the handle custom field. Um, field changes. Um, it produced an error on the auto report um, on custom fields. So if they tried to delete something um, on their custom field changes, um, the auto report was not liking that. So now when they do delete it, it will just show as null on the auto report as deleted. The next improvement on February, um, they wanted to add more validations to the direct deposit distribution because a lot of times districts were missing some um, fields and then that was causing problems once they got through their payroll. So now the following properties are required. So they cannot save when creating a direct deposit for an employee, they cannot um, code account number, direct deposit type and ACH destination. So when they were in their payroll item or pay distributions, and now they're gonna see red stars or red little, like it's, um, they have to have those in there. Nope, I thought they did, nope, they don't. But if you don't have anything in there, it should, yeah, they're gonna get an uh, error. So those fills have to be um, in there. So that should eliminate some issues with districts um, during their payroll when they didn't have all the information entered in there. Um, they also improved, uh, worked on improving the W-2 report. The next one is the CRDC report. Um, there was a request to remove the position code 415 from the report because that's no longer used. So that was done. Um, they removed their perimeters from the title page of the audit report. Um, when running the single entity, um, there was a start and stop date. So now, before I get to this, because that was a, a new feature, under core, we're going to have a couple of new options here that you can actually run. And that's a new feature. Actually, that's right down here below in the new features. So. Uh, a new option has been added to the auto report. So now they can run an auto report under each of these. So they don't have to go to the reports and auto report now they actually add them or um, run their auto report. So if they're adding new employees or adding something, they can run an re auto report directly from the screen itself. So if they say they went in and did some modifications to this and or added something, um, I'll just put in something here and they changed it and they saved it. Now they're gonna see an auto report. So now they can run the auto report with the date of whatever they would wanna put in and they just wanna see that update. Okay. And there it is. So now you can see anything that was updated for that employee will show 
Um, I was testing yesterday and you can see that that was yesterday. It showed on there. I just changed test for pay, um, old value, new, and then what I did today. So that's directly on there. Um, so I think the districts are going to like that. Um, so that will show anything um, modifications or um, adding. If they're adding a new employee, that will show up that audit report now. So I hopefully uh, they um, utilize that a lot. And I think that'll be helpful. Save some time so they don't have to go back and forth. And they can check right away um, if they make sure they had all their information added when they're adding the employee or maybe modifying it. It's all there. So again, these are the ones that it's listed under. Okay. So saying that, um, going back up here to the improvement, um, they were just making improvements to the title page. So when you run it, um, where's my report again? I gotta find it. There it is. So you see, it just has the options page of the date you entered. And then down here, it just shows where you're at. It'll show the compensation or position. So that's, they just added that just to show um, what um, screen you were um, running the auto report for. So that is what that improvement was. Because after they created that option, they just thought that they would clean that up and make it look a little nicer for their um, reports page. So the next one, um, uh, was an improvement that when their um, districts are coming over from Classic, um, they wanted to set all the legacy compensations right away as primary on the import. So that was improvement that was made for districts that were just coming on. So any district of your districts that don't have or haven't um, imported over to redesign, um, then they will see this. Um, allow the AOS payment distribution report and the AOS payment history report to be included in the report bundles. So now those are actually added um, under the report bundles and you can select those if your district wants those to be created um, as a report and, and included in their bundle. So now that improvement has been added. Um, the ACH report updated to run the progress button. Um, when they were running the ACH report, um, districts were requesting, um, they wanted to see, um, they couldn't tell if it was actually running or if it was just stuck. So now when you run the ACH, um, let's see if I can do that. I'll show you exactly what it will look like. And they generated right here. They're gonna see that blue circle now. So once that's completed, um, then they know that that has been generated. So that was a request um, from some districts that they just wanted so they could tell if it was running or not. Okay. Um, the payroll error report, um, you wanna add warnings for missing services payroll items. Um, that was an error. Uh, districts were requesting that that be added on there because um, a lot of districts were missing this and not catching that error, uh, was no error. So we put that on there now. So now they're gonna see on the payroll error report, no active stirs payroll for the existing employee and it's gonna list their name then position and what retirement stirs. And then the payroll item um, 450 missing for employees. So that's what that would be um, stating. And again, would be for stirs employee would be the same thing. They would get a warning. And then that means they're missing a 400 missing employee. So they can catch that, fix that, and re, um, update the payroll. So they don't get too far and um, get all the way through payroll, post it, and then see that they didn't have that included for that employee. The next one is the multiple job calendar improvements. Um, we had a lot of requests for the uh, job calendar to be um, updated. And what they did, um, it, so now that it doesn't page break in the middle of a month, that has been updated. And so now a full year calendar can print on one double-sided page. So um, if you're printing, now when you're printing your job calendars and you're doing them for the fiscal year,
Let's see if I can get it to work here. And you also have the option to do landscape or portrait. Let's see if we can get the report to come up here. Yes. So that's what landscape looks like. It just goes July, August, September, across, October, all the way down. But if you wanted to do it in PDF or portrait, excuse me. Okay. And then here is in PDF. So now you can see the reports. Okay. Um, some other things. Oh, show calendar outline. This is a new update that was done. So now when you run it, it just shows them with lines. That was just an update somebody wanted, uh, wanted I think at this for going in, they just, um, so they can read it a little easier. on that. Okay. Um, we had a question from Vicki. Uh, will the warning stop the actual file from posting? Okay, let me go back. Warning. No, I, I, if you're ex uh, talking about that payroll arrow for uh, the STIRS, I don't believe it does because um, foundation schools, um, like I said, foundation schools can ignore that. So they couldn't do it as an error that it would actually stop them. So the districts okay. are just going to have to really watch their payroll error reports and make sure and look for that warning because they okay. will, it will let them continue on. on that. Okay, because the, the reason I'm asking is specifically for student. Um, that the student workers that do not pay into a retirement system. So oh, you, wouldn't, yes. you wouldn't want that to completely stop right. them. Correct. From being able yeah. to continue on. Okay. Correct. It's just a warning, like an info kind of warning, um, but it's not an error, so it won't stop them from posting. So correct. So yeah, okay. foundation schools or for, like you said, for student workers. Okay. Thank you. So, you're welcome. Oh, gosh. I'm sorry. My cat wanted to join. Um, okay. So we'll go down to the, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. She's being feisty this morning. So the next one, okay. So, okay. Um, okay, so we're at the multiple cap. Okay, so the next one, we did the new features and that's when I showed you uh, that the new auto report now will be showing um, for each of those items on the, um, under core. Um, the next thing, um, these are new features for February is the create new data uh, date code extract reports. Um, we were having some requests from districts for auditors. And this kind of, I think what I, what I understand, it mimics the employee master report. And that is listed under reports, under auditor of the state and employee report. So now they can run it per employee or they can run it for every employee if they need to run that. They can run it by comma or CSV or tab separate values. Let's see if I can run it for a few employees here. I'm not certain if I can, because these are old files, but we will see. See what I get here. Oh, no data returned. Okay. Let me see, I might have one I ran yesterday, but I don't. Okay. Um, I don't know what I can do. Since these are old. Let me go into. Uh, I can find my documentation. There it is. Under reports, I can show you what the report will look like. At least I can show you because I can't get it to run on my. So here is the um, documentation for the AOS report. And what we did in this. Um, to get some of these fields on the report, um, of I listed uh, the fields of how and where the state is being determined. So they can take a look at that or if they have questions on the report and they can't figure out where is this picking it up, 
um, we broke it down um, some of the fields so they can figure out where is that, where's this report picking that stuff up from. Um, when they run the report for the start and stop dates, uh, so that is any compensations that have a start and stop date within that date range, um, it will produce a line on the output file. So it's either if they have one or many compensations. And the other thing is um, only contract and legacy compensations are included on the report. There will be no contract, non-contracts are included on this report. And then again, um, the positions that are getting picked up, these are only be paid, um, only paid ones during that date range that they put in here in the start and stop dates will be on that report. So just a reminder, so they can go through here and look and just kind of go over what, what this report's pulling in. Um, the enter, the, that is a required, the start and stop date is required. And here is a, example of what that report is. So here's the tab delimited and it just um, has the employees on here or they can run it by the CSB. And list all the fields. So again, um, I think this kind of mimics the employee master report that they can use for auditors. Um, so hopefully um, this is a good report that districts can start using um, to send to their auditors for that. So, okay. Let's see, where are we at next? We're down here. Oh, no features. Okay. So, that is update. Now, auto report. Oh, let's get down to February. We're still in January. It moved on me. Okay. Uh, the next thing in February for new features was the position level under new contracts. Um, so position level fields were added to the new contract and they mimic kind of the position record um, under the EMIS. So show you what that is and this has been added so under new contracts when they pull in an employee to copy employee position right here in the middle this is getting pulled over from the position and it will mimic in the position field I think it's the EMIS related information. So now during new contract, they can update, they update these fields. They can do it all right there if they need to update those. They don't have to um, fix it later on or do another mass load. Um, so I think this is gonna be nice. So again, it shows, uh, brings in the position description, job status, pay group, building code and building department. Um, position status, position start date, retirement, position code, EMIS work days, building IRN. So it, it, quite a few fields were um, added to the new contract here. Um, and also another one was this employee check distribution and that comes from your employee screen. So if they wanna change their um, employee check distribution, um, maybe they changed um, departments or buildings or something, um, now they can add and put on their um, where they're at and if they sort them by check distribution during processing payroll or payments. Um, now that they can check, they can um, update that right here too. They don't have to go in and change it under the employee now. So hopefully that makes it a little easier for your district districts. <clears throat> okay. All right, the next thing. Um, the next one was the create new AOS employee report. And, okay, so we did an improvement and then we did a, um, a new feature. So kind of my improvements and my new features kind of got ahead of me. So 
But again, this is that new employee extract report that's out there um, that I had just um, mentioned earlier. But that was, this is when that new feature was created was on this release. Um, so a create new X doc report for the rule and authentication configured for SO1C audits. So there were some requests to add two new reports to payroll. Um, again, you can't find these in the UI components on reports or anything. They're only listed under report bundle and they're called authentication and password requirement report in default break-in detection invasion will report. And I think this was something maybe the auditors were asking for. So this is something that was added now. So now when they go under windows, I think is that where I wanna be? Great. And then you go down here. And then here's all the reports that they're able to put in their um, report bundles. And I think, let's see if I can find it. Kind of probably just have to scroll down um, and to find those, but it's in there, right there. SSC uh, authentication and password, can't talk that. And default password, sorry about that again. Default break-in detection and invasion rule. So now, they can add these under the report bundles or their auditors. And there's a lot of other uh, reports here that they can go ahead and look at. And I also updated the documentation to show all those reports under the report bundles. So if they have some that they may want to add, they can go in here and look under Reports or vulnerable can reports. I try to update it and so it should list everything that was under listed under that drop down. Okay. Okay. So there's those new reports. Um, and then that is all right now on um, the updates for January and February. Um, we did have some internal and patches, but these were specific to districts and some internal work that um, they worked on. So that was the other two things. Um, is there any other questions on anything um, on this? And um, this is available if uh, my um, worksheet here, I can attach it to, um, and so you can click on it and it, it takes you to each one too. So you can look at each one and all you do is just click on it and I can attach that in to our, um, under our release or our trainings, excuse me. I think of what I wanna say. So um, any other questions for anybody um, that wants to see something a little bit more detail? on all that, so he did have a lot this last two months, so. Okay, um, I think the next step would be Michelle. She yes, I'll go ahead and get started on inventory. I'll go ahead and share my screen now. Okay, thank you for attending. Okay, can everyone see the training and registration page okay? Cool, okay. So, um, what I wanted just to say first before I get started on the inventory um, updates is that on our training and registration page, I know this time we packed in two months worth of stuff. So it's going a little bit longer than uh, what we had planned. But from now on, we are just going to be doing these monthly. So our next one is at the end or at the beginning of April. And so when we do the April one, we're just going to be reviewing March's release um, updates and the same thing. Um, when we get near the end of April, um, we'll actually be going through, um, you know, the, the April releases. We couldn't fit it in to May because we already had stuff scheduled. So, you know, the, you know, the, the next um, recap um, 
session we have is just going to go over the prior months. So we won't be doing multiple months anymore. So that hopefully will make things go a little bit faster. Um, so going to the inventory stuff, I'm going to go back to um, the recap page. And uh, at the bottom of the January recap is the inventory updates. And so uh, what we've done is uh, we've made some changes, um, some a lot of bug fixes going on in inventory right now. And so um, the first one that's listed there in January, we had two releases. We had version 1.7 and 1.8. And obviously you can see from here, you can click on those links and that will take you to the um, actual release notes. Um, and they were both regular releases. Um, but for that first one there, um, we had an issue where if an item was deleted, so if you went into um, items and deleted a, a particular item that's allowed to be deleted, um, at, at, you know, obviously capitalized assets cannot be um, just deleted in the items grid. Um, the problem was it wasn't also um, deleting the associated acquisitions. Uh, so we fixed that on the 1.7 release um, so that it deletes the related acquisitions as well. Um, underneath the uh, system import, uh, we've made a lot of changes and still are. Um, we still have a lot of um, things that were uh, in this next release that we're cleaning up. Um, one thing is um, with the import option, you know, you're going to see a lot of different import types that you can use. And so one of them was um, the category code. We fixed that and it's updated to include um, the asset class life expectancy and inflation rates. When those were importing, you were getting errors on those and we're not allowing you to import them. So we fixed that. So those get updated. And also um, it was requiring an insurance class field um, and that's not um, required. So we fixed that um, so that it no longer requires that the insurance class field gets updated on that. Um, the migration importer. So this is the system importer um where you're actually using a spreadsheet a csv file to import stuff into the application our migration importer where you're actually doing the extraction from classic and importing it using our import option um, that's been updated as well and we made a lot of changes to warnings instead of errors and one of them was the invalid beginning depreciation dates um, those were um, producing errors, but we fixed that back on January releases um, to where it's now a warning. Um, invalid and also um, invalid asset class funder functions on capitalized assets. Uh, those were warnings and or those were errors. And so we changed those to warnings. Uh, missing disposition code. Um, if it was invalid or if it was missing on the disposition transactions, it was generating an error, we changed that to a warning. And partial location categories. If there was um, the location you know, room, but not the location category was, was on classic, they were getting an error and it wasn't allowing it. So we fixed that as well to just be a warning. So basically the data as it is in classic, is for these particular fields are gonna pull in as is and redesign. So that helped with a lot of these import questions that we were getting. Um, another thing is the fixed asset by source report was not properly calculating the amount for, gen for the donation and other lines on the report. So that was fixed in January and the wildcard filtering. And so if I'm going into items, and um, that was broken. So if I'm trying to go in and type in, you know, oops, percent sign is our wild card. Um, what was happening is that it wasn't displaying the results. So we fixed that as well so that the wild card um, filtering is working again. I think when we did the greater than less than uh, filters, it broke that. So then we fixed it. So it should be working now. So that's what we did in January. So I'm going to move over to the February recap, and I'm going to scroll down to the inventory section. And as you, you can see, if you're looking at that, um, we had quite a few. I'll go back to the recap here and show you what a February 
and I'll scroll to the inventory. There are a lot of things going on, a lot of bug fixes that we need to that we needed to uh, make, and also improvements um, with um, the Active Directory. We added that to it. So just to kind of go through those here. Um, <clears throat> Underneath, a lot of these were involving the import option underneath system. And so we made a lot of, I'm not gonna kind of go through um, all of them because that requires importing and doing actual imports and that would take forever. Um, so I just wanna talk about them with you. Um, but underneath there, like I said, there are a lot of different options underneath the import types and the disposition, which is disposition transactions, um, an error was being generated um, if the disposition date is in a prior fiscal year. Um, so um, we have changed that then, so it no longer has that. Um, the disposition codes uh, were not set properly when adding or modifying a new disposition. And so we made sure that that's been fixed as well in February. Underneath the system, item import, if I click on that one, well, that one's already selected here. We did add some new fields that we have since removed. Um, there was an allow a prior year field right around this area here and a create acquisition record. Um, these were intentionally for districts that were not migrating. Well, when we started to look into this a little bit further, um, the migrating districts could use this and it could have um, did some um, unintended um, postings, um, allowing them after they migrated to go in and add an item from five years ago if they wanted to. And so obviously if it's a capitalized asset that makes it even worse. So we pulled those um, on the next release then and removed those. So what we're going to do on a future release is provide an option, probably under system menu, that will allow those non-migrating districts to um, post those items. So if you've got a district that, you know, didn't use um, classic, or they did use classic, but they don't want to migrate over, they just want to pull specific things, we want to find a way for them to add those items through a spreadsheet with those dates from the prior year. They've got land, buildings, vehicles that they purchased several years ago. We want to find a way to do that. We thought we had that figured out, um, but then we realized that it did cause some more issues. So we pulled those. So hopefully here we'll get that on here within the next uh, few releases and get an option out there that we're gonna securely have for those districts that are not migrating. Um, also with the acquisition import type, so you'll notice when you select these different import types, the options are gonna change as well. Um, we added the ability to add an acquisition with an existing, for an existing item. What was happening is you, you, you know, acquisitions cannot be added if there isn't an item out there already. But what was happening is you, you know, I have that item out there, I want to add an additional acquisition to it and it gave me an error. So we fixed that so that you can do that. Um, with underneath the items import, I'm gonna go back to that. Um, adding the ability to add, oh, I'm sorry, uh, new items um, that are capitalized assets the flag was not getting checked on the item. So we fixed that. So it marks it as capitalized. The depreciation method field was case sensitive. Um, so if you had the depreciation method on your spreadsheet and it was a small S instead of capital S for straight line, you were getting an error. So we fixed that as well. The organization fund and function codes, um, when those were imported in, it wasn't creating those on um, the core. So we've updated that. So if you have a fun code that you know is new and it's on your item spreadsheet, um, when you add that item, that fund code will also be added underneath the core menu. So same thing with um, the fund and or functions and organizations. Also, um, fields related to core as well, the category, location, and organization codes 
um, those were um, case sensitive. And so we changed those. So they no longer are case sensitive so that those get um, imported correctly. The lease field um, imports. Um, so those are not getting recognized when adding new items. So we fixed that as well. And also we corrected to allow updating certain fields for items in a closed or prior year. So what was happening is that, you know, in classic, if you remember, you go in and um, you pull up an item from, you know, you added five years ago and you want to change the location. Um, so it was restricting that um, on some fields here via the spreadsheet and a lot, not allowing those to get updated. So we fixed that. Um, there are obviously certain fields that should not be um, updated for items that were done in a prior year, and that would be fund, function, asset class, original costs, and the acquisition date. Obviously, if you need to make changes to those, those should be done underneath you know, the transfer transactions option or doing an additional acquisition and things like that. Um, but if you wanted to go in and change the item category, um, you know, you can do that manually in here, but via the system import, it wasn't allowing it. So we've cleaned all those up so that you can make those changes. Um, with the disposition option here, uh, what we noticed is when I would go into transactions, and go into the disposition grid and extract dispositions out there to make updates, um, there was a problem with the disposition code. So if I went into dispositions and I ran an extract, um, what it was doing is it was pulling the code description sold and not the code number. And so obviously, you know, you have that on your spreadsheet, it's not gonna load back in correctly. So we uh, updated that then so that when you extract existing dispositions to make changes, um, it shows 10 instead of sold. So we got that fixed. Um, also, let's see here. When exporting from the item grid, um, we did make some updates. So in items, if I was using the export grid items option, um, some of the field names um, for that header row were not correct. Um, and it was the secondary tag and the organization code. So we've changed those now so that they're correct on the export so that once you make the changes, you can correctly import them in. It's gonna recognize that correct field header. So we're, we've been busy with the system imports and we still have um, some more to do on this next release. Um, my intention is I believe after this next release, maybe it's the release after that too, is to remove some of the restrictions that I put in the documentation about adding items, adding dispositions, and adding um, acquisitions. Right now I have it noted not to use those until we get the rest of the stuff cleaned up. Um, so I'm hoping here within these next couple releases, we get that done so that they're able to do that. So I'm gonna keep those restrictions out there in the documentation until we get that done. Um, any questions about the system import? Um, one other thing we did um, is underneath system users, um, we corrected some permission issues that we were having with the uh, following roles. It was the INV group manager role um, that no longer has access to this user uh, grid. Um, what was happening is that um, they were being able to change roles for any other user, including admin. So we fixed that so that that's no longer possible. Um, also, one other thing that was reported was those users uh, with the INV standard role were not able to pull from USAS and delete pending items from the pending items grid. So if I go to pending items here, they weren't able to use this option um, and delete from the grid using this option. So they were able to use this, but not this one. Um, so we have fixed that as well. So they're able to do that. Um, allow modifying the username um, from the system users. So we've uh, 
oops, it's touchy sometimes. Um, so this will only be the INV admin will have the capability of modifying the username. And also under core configurations, um, go there. What was happening is we were told that we got a couple tickets saying that people couldn't access the, um, the configuration option underneath core. And I think that happened when we added the configuration option under system. So we fixed that now and they now should be able to go back in and see the information underneath core configuration. So we fixed that on the last release. And so those were the bug fixes that uh, we handled. And like I said, there are going to be some more here coming up um, in this next release. So hopefully things will be squared away with the system import that will allow us then um, to, to lift those restrictions. Um, one of the improvements that we added, like I said, is this new one under system configuration. And this is the active directory information. So this has been added to set that up. So it's similar in the way that USAS and payroll work. And so once that's set up, um, just want to make sure when you're going into system users, and I'm just going to pick on one of these here, I'll pick on Jason, um, that the external authentication is checkmarked there. And so once that's checked, then they're not going to be able to use like a local type of credential. They're going to use their Active Directory information. So that will should just work for them. OK. <clears throat> Any questions about the uh, inventory releases? OK. Um, one other thing I wanted to make note of while we're in here is where the inventory releases are. You know, I know that we have them linked in the recap page, which is great, but also I wanted to show you where they're at on our main page. And we do have the state software redesign section in our wiki, and I'm in the main uh, homepage. And we've got them for use and payroll, and we recently added the inventory one too. So when I click on that, it'll take you to all of the uh, inventory releases and not just to a specific one. So as you can see, we're on uh, right now, our current release is 1.10.1. It was a hot fix that we did, um, which fixed some of these things I just talked about. Um, and then 1.11, I was hoping would go out today, but I think um, that will not go out until possibly Monday now. Um, but that's going to be the next release is 1.11. Okay, any other questions? All right, well, I'll go ahead and stop sharing and send it back to uh, Pat. And uh, I appreciate you guys um, for attending today's session. And like I said, hopefully they won't go as long next time since we'll just be covering the prior month. But thanks everybody and um, have a good weekend.